I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Equatorial Guinea to introduce an address by the head of state. Senor President. President. Secretary General. Ladies and gentlemen, permanent representatives. It is a great honor for me to introduce the pre-recorded statement by His Excellency Obiang Ngema Mbazogo, Head of State and Government of the Republic of Equatorial Guinea. President, distinguished he heads of state and government, Secretary General, Majesties, esteemed delegates, ladies and gentlemen. Allow me first to congratulate His Excellency Bolkan Boskir of the Republic of Turkey for his unanimous election as President of the 75th General Assembly of the United Nations. Rest assured, President, that you may count upon the full support and cooperation of the Republic of Equatorial Guinea. I would also like to express my gratitude to and recognition of his predecessor, His Excellency. Professor Tijani Mohamed Bande of the Brotherly Federal Republic of Nigeria for his leadership and the magnificent work achieved at a particularly delicate time. Likewise, we wish him every success in his future endeavours. I should also like to pay tribute to the Secretary General of the United Nations, His Excellency Antonio Guterres, for his contribution to seeking peace and development across the world. As chance would have it, the celebration of the 75th anniversary of the creation of our great organization has coincided with the greatest health catastrophe that humanity has had to face over recent years. The COVID-19 coronavirus disease pandemic. The COVID-19 pandemic made its sudden entry into our lives, exacting a heavy toll in terms of human lives, as well as incalculable collateral damage to the world's economy. Humanity must act in solidarity, since we are stronger when we are united when we cooperate and when we share experiences. Only by bolstering cooperation will we be able to eradicate this pandemic. COVID-19 is the enemy of all of us and must be tackled as such. It is not enough to eradicate it it is equally important to agree upon measures to hasten the post-COVID recovery. This will mean adopting measures which expedite and allow for a uh, rapid emergency growth in order to stimulate the economy. With a view to quickly returning to normality. Nobody should be left behind. This will also require joint efforts. And in this regard, 
we concur with the United Nations. When the United Nations calls for a global response to this crisis. President, unity and solidarity were decisive factors 75 years ago now when the United Nations was created in the wake of the Second World War. The victors in this war had conflicting interests but were for a moment able to unite and to place uh, the salvation and liberation of the world above their own interests. And this was an absolute priority and necessity. Given the damage and suffering caused by the war, they were able to create this great organisation with the aim of protecting the world from the scourge of war. The Charter of the United Nations lays the foundations of international law and multilateralism, which have proven to be the best tool to tackle humanity's challenges and also to make our planet into a just, prosperous and peaceful place. There are no viable alternatives to multilateralism, nor to the prevalence of the spirit of this charter. 75 years have gone by. The world has clearly changed. But the values and the spirit of the charter remain valid. And the United Nations has played an important role in resolving many conflicts. It was decisive in the fight for decolonization, and it has tackled humanitarian crises in many regions of the world. At the same time, it is important for the United Nations to adapt to the times and to current realities. It must reform on the basis of justice, equality and solidarity. We support the reforms undertaken by the Secretary-General, which should allow the organisation to become more effective and nimble and closer to the people and to their true problems. The main bodies of the United Nations must undergo reform. We need a revitalising General Assembly which can have greater influence on the member states. But the body which best epitomises the current stasis of the United Nations is the Security Council which clearly no longer reflects the realities of today's world. This is why Equatorial Guinea stands firm in the demands contained within the Ezelwini Consensus and the Sirte de Declaration, which can be summarised in ensuring that Africa should not be less, be dis belittled, nor be put at a disadvantage. The historic injustice to the African continent must be repaired. It is ironic that whilst African issues make up 75% of the Security Council's agenda, Africa does not have a full voice and is in inferior uh, conditions in this body when it comes to dealing with issues of vital importance for the continent. President, Equatorial Guinea firmly believes in the three pillars of the United Nations. Development, human rights, peace and security. These have inspired our political 
direction when it comes to designing the programmes which, programs which guide our political action. We, therefore, defend the supremacy of international law, which is based on the Charter of the United Nations. This Charter is the fruit of jointly agreed rules, which are rooted in the sovereign equality of states, the non-interference in the eternal affairs of other states, and respect for territorial integrity. Misinterpretation of these principles leads directly to confrontation. International conflicts and disputes must be resolved by pacific means, in line with the principles of justice and international law. All states must abstain from threatening or using force against their integrity and political independence or from any other act which is incompatible with the principles and purposes of the Charter of the United Nations. President, December 2019 saw the end of Equatorial Guinea's membership of the Security Council where our voice was heard loud and clear and our country's contribution on an equal footing with the most important countries in the world was very evident in seeking solutions to the major problems affecting peace, security and stability across the world. We contributed with independence and rigour to combat those factors which cause conflicts in the world and phenomena phenomena such as mercenaries. We also played our part in resolving and pacifying many wars. The end of our time in the Security Council did not in any way imply that we gave up gave up on our goals and objectives. On the contrary, we have reaffirmed them and we will use the valuable experience acquired to continue fighting for what we wish to see across the world, which is peace, security and prosperity. The international community must pool its efforts to help Africa to implement the United Nations Agenda 2030 for sustainable development. And the African Union's Agenda 2063. And to start building infrastructures in the areas of health, education, the economy and trade and it must focus on addressing Africa's problems in areas such as youth, women, refugees and employment with a view to improving socio-economic development in African countries. The United Nations Security Council must increase its communication and coordination with the African Union Peace and Security Council. It must create mechanisms for uh, shared planning, decision making, evaluation and information sessions as well as working together in the areas of early alert, strategic review, the design and deployment of mandates so as to improve coordination. President, it is a sad reality that most of the conflicts affecting the world remain active conflicts. Long-standing conflicts such as the situation in Syria, the clashes in Libya, the war in Yemen, the Arab-Israeli conflict, the situation in Afghanistan, instability in the Middle East, 
the conflict in the Central, Af Central African Republic, the war in Somalia, and so on, all remain unresolved and with no clear or just exit in view. These conflicts are exacerbated by phenomena such as the illicit trafficking of small arms and light weapons and the pillaging of resources. We note with great concern the development of the situation in the Sahel where huge efforts have been deployed but these have not led to the necessary stabilization of the situation which would allow this afflicted region of Africa to optimize its undeniable potential. Equatorial Guinea believes that, the, that political changes must happen only by uh, democratic means. The use of force is not acceptable to achieve political objectives. Africa's, Africa's stability is bound to have repercussions on the rest of the world. If Africa cannot resolve its problems satisfactorily, the other continents will also not be able to achieve sustainable stability. A good example are the thousands of our young people who risk their lives to emigrate elsewhere in dangerous crossings. Denying the global nature of the world will only lead us to perpetuating the shared problems which require joint pooled efforts. President, Equatorial Guinea calls for the lifting of the economic, financial and trade blockade against Cuba so that this country can fulfil its enormous potential and meet the needs of its people. The phenomenon of climate change deserves the same attention from the international community since it has had devastating effects on our lives in the form of hurricanes, cyclones, fires, floods and so on. The deterioration of the environment very negatively affects many of the livelihoods and activities which support a large proportion of our population. It is therefore urgent to mobilise so as to find a lasting and sustainable solution to this problem. To conclude, President, we express our wish that the world choose the path of solidarity, that we join forces, forces which are considerable when focused in the right direction, so as to make our world a better place and to ensure a prosperous and promising future for present generations and generations to come. Thank you very much. On behalf of the General Assembly, I wish to thank the President and Head of State of the Republic of Equatorial Guinea for the statement just made. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Haiti to introduce an address by the head of state. 